509, the number who thought that uh, global uh, climate change was a top priority, registered at 30 percent. January of 2012, it was 25 percent. Last January, 28 percent. So in four years, the, 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 the urgency of trying to combat global warming never broke 30 percent. Uh, you would never know it from, from listening to the media or from listening to the hysterics of, uh, of the left. Joining us right now is Dr. Edward Hawkins, climate scientist at the University of Reading in uh, the United Kingdom. And um, doctor, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon. You know, there was a report that came out um, recently, and again, there's not a whole lot made about it. I think I saw this story in The Economist uh, where you were quoted, uh, talking about how over the past 15 years, air temperatures at the Earth's surface have been flat, uh, even though greenhouse gas emissions have continued to, to rise. Uh, the world added about 100 billion tons of carbon to the atmosphere between 2000 and 2010. Uh, that's about a quarter of all the CO2 uh, put there since 1750. Yet, as James Hansen, the head of NASA's uh, 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 space studies, Goddard Institute, says, the five-year mean global temperature has been flat for a decade. Now, explain this to me. Um, well, so firstly, some context, really. I mean, as you probably realize, the, the temperature of the planet has increased by about one and a half degrees Fahrenheit over the last 150 years. And the last decade has been the warmest in that time, and the warmest for, for several hundred years, probably. Um, so that, that, that's the context of where we're at. The Arctic sea ice is melting, the sea levels are rising, the climate is changing. But, you know, I, you know, I, I, I got a soundbite, and let's look, let's look, I'll try to look for the soundbite. Um, again, um, you know, how is it possible every time I, every time I, uh, I look out the window, I mean, we just came through the coldest March in the United States in many, many, many years. It's still cold outside in April. We're 10 degrees below normal here in, in New York City. Um, and while, well, let, let's stick to that. Let's stick to that. I mean, if all this was science and all this was factual and one thing led to the other and that was a scientific fact, then everything should be getting warmer progressively. Well, it's pretty chilly here as well, I can tell you. We've even had some snow today. Um, but that, 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 of course, is weather, right? And we were talking about longer-term longer term climate change, which acts on much longer timescales. So, I mean, the, the other point we need to make very clear is that we expect to see decades where the temperature doesn't warm very much, just like we expect to see decades where the temperature goes up quite a lot. This is a natural part of how the climate system works. There are ups and downs, and uh, we, we had a very strong up during the 1990s. And we're having a relatively um, quiet period at the moment, and this is what we expect to see. Well, well, okay. So I guess that that would uh, w would fit in with how in the 1970s um, there were there were Time magazine and Newsweek magazine cover stories, and all the talk was about how we're headed for a new ice age. Well, I'm not sure the scientists uh, believe that at the time. Unfortunately, no. I mean, so what, we, we did have cooling temperatures in the 1970s, and that was uh, um, that was due to the fact that uh, during that time. We were developing um, industrially. We had lots of coal-fired power stations, putting lots of particulate matters into the atmosphere, which helped reflect the sunlight back into space. Um, and then we had the Clean Air Act come in in that, that time, and we started to clean up our act, and that cooling effect was taken away, and the warming then from carbon dioxide then came to the fore. You know, when, when, when people talk, uh, doctor, and we're talking to Dr. Edward Hawkins, climate scientist at the University of Reading, here on the Steve Malsberg show, and folks, I'm trying. I'm trying to look for the um, the Al Roker um, soundbite. If you could find it offhand, let me know what number it is, uh, Will, because uh, I'm I'm looking through it. But can, can you can you tell me when when people uh, like Al Roker and the the crew on uh, on NBC's Today Show uh, uses Hurricane Sandy, and like Governor Cuomo did, and so many others did after Hurricane Sandy, to say, well, that's it. Look at this storm. You know, don't tell me there's not global warming and climate change. Look at, look at this. Look at Sandy. When Sandy made landfall here, it wasn't even a hurricane. But uh, how did they destroy it? Let, let's listen to this. Let's listen to this. Take two, some conspiracy theories. I want to show you a little public policy polling. They took 20 widespread conspiracy theories mm -hmm. and asked the American public what it thought. Do you believe in these? The what very does this say about us? Global warming <laughs> is a hoax. 37% believe that. 29% say aliens exist, 
14 percent wow. of americans believe in bigfoot seven percent say the moon landing was fake that's 12 and a half million americans oh believe quote but lizard people control politics 37 percent 37 percent of these people don't believe in global warming yeah they think it's a hoax yeah, yeah. i mean that uh, uh, okay two words superstorm sandy. sandy right yeah. two words two words to dispel anybody's doubts about global warming superstorm sandy are they out of their minds? In, in, in what way? Uh, in what way? How does that prove anything? We've never had so we've had worse storms than Superstorm Sandy back in the 1800s and early 1900s. What does Superstorm Sandy mean or prove? I, I agree. Superstorm Sandy doesn't uh, prove climate change in any way. Right. So they are out of their minds using that as a as a convincer of, of for I, I, how could people doubt global warming? Al Roker and NBC said, "I have two words: Superstorm Sandy," and they're like, "All oh, right, right." I mean, this is well, ludicrous. Well, what you have to do is look at the much longer term context. We've, we've seen temperatures go up one and a half degrees Fahrenheit over the last 150 years. We've seen sea levels rise. We've seen the uh, Arctic sea ice retreat massively over, over that time as well. It's, it's a much longer-term context you've got to put these changes into. So you, so you think we're headed where, sir, doctor? Where are we headed? The temperatures are con going to continue to rise as long as we increase our greenhouse gas emissions. So, so you, you're one of those who calls for what, like a carbon tax? Oh, I, I'm not. I wouldn't um, talk about policy. You know, my, my job as a climate scientist is to inform about what will happen if we don't reduce our emissions and i i, I do that i i talk to people like you and I, I say the the impacts that we're expected to see and then the government um can then make its decisions about what to do about it well how did we get it how did scientists get it so wrong in in the 70s saying we were we were headed to an ice age well i don't think they did you don't think they did it was all over no. the, i'll show you the, the magazine but, covers with the quoting scientists so i mean but that's not in the peer-reviewed literature is it that's that's a little magazine and as i said the temperatures were cooling during that time, and we had a very good explanation for it. But most people, um, most of the scientific community expected temperatures to continue to rise after that, which they did. Now, let me ask you one other question, uh, Doctor. Uh, 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 yep. You're a scientist, I'm not. But isn't science something that's proven beyond a uh, – well, you give me the definition. I always thought it was proven beyond a doubt. If it's a scientific fact, that means it's a scientific fact. How could you have so many thousands of scientists and climatologists and meteorologists who would sit here and disagree with you and still claim that this is science? I don't think you will find thousands of Oh, there are, sir. There absolutely disagree. are. That, there absolutely are. Well, uh, as I say, you know, the, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change will release its next report in September, and it will say that con the temperatures are going to continue to rise over the next century unless greenhouse gas emissions are But that's not a fact. That's a theory, right? Of course. So, 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 it, it, so it, it, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. So it's not science. It's a no, scientific it's a, theory. Sci well, as you just said, a scientific theory is still science. A scientific and, theory is true science? Of course it is. Wait a minute. So, so, so you're telling me that a, a, the, the, the scientists who disagree with you, whether it's 12 or 1,200 or 12,000, they're also scientists, and they also have a theory, and it's the opposite of yours. So how could you both have scientific theories, which by your definition make it science? We understand the physics of the greenhouse gas effect very, very well. John Tyndall first realized the greenhouse effect in 1861. This has been known for a very, right. very long time. Doctor, I, 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 I'm up against a hard break, top of the hour. I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. I hope you'll come back. Dr. Edward Hawkins, climate scientist at the University of Reading. But if, thank if, you if, much, if, 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 thank you.